First number, the number 6862140 is divisible by, by 3 by adding all the digits. So 6 plus 8 plus 6, 2, 1, 4, 0. <clears throat> what is that? This is 14 plus 6, 20, 22, 23 plus 4, that is 27. So therefore, it is divisible by 3. How about by 4? Let us recall that it is divisible by 4 if the last two digits is divisible by 4. 40 is divisible by 4. So therefore, this is also true. And when there's a number divisible by 5, it ends in 0 or 5. And the last digit here is 0. So therefore, everything is correct. So the answer is letter D. Okay, so what is the sum of the greatest common prime factor and least common multiple of 32 and 28? First, we need to find the greatest common prime factor. It's not 4. All the, the GCF, the greatest common factor of 32 and 28 is 4. But what we want to look for is the greatest common prime, right? What is that? The answer is 2, correct? What is now the LCM of 32 and 28? So how do we get the LCM? Use continuous division. What will be a number that divides both 32 and 28? That is 4, correct? And then, what do you do? Divide. 32 divided by 4 is 8. Next, 28 divided by 4 is 7, right? And then, is there still a number that divides both 8 and 7? None already, correct? So therefore, what would be the LCM? It will be the outer numbers here, all right? So the LCM is 4 times 8 times 7, okay? 4 times 8 is 32 times 7, that is 224, all right? So this one is 224. So that means we just want to get the sum of 2 and 224, understand? So the answer is 226, letter A. Next, the product of the least prime factor of 32 and the greatest prime factor of 77 is divisible by which of the following numbers? So first, we have to get the least prime factor. What is the smallest factor of 32, which is prime? That is 2, correct? What's the greatest prime factor of 77? Recall that 77 is 11 times 7. So the greatest prime factor is 11, right? So meaning to say we want the product of 2 and 11, right? Now, 2 times 11 or 22 is divisible by what number? Obviously, letter C. Next problem, we have an order of operations problem. Let us recall that we have to do MDAS. It's actually here. Okay, first let's do the parenthesis. So we have 10 minus 8, so that's 2 times negative 4. And the next we have to do the exponents. 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. And then, we perform all multiplications and division. So here, they're just tied up. We just perform it as we read it from left to right. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 divided by, again, I will just write it, a negative 8. And then, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16 plus 8. So that's negative 8. Letter B. A company has 80 employees. The same number of employees work on 
each shift. How many shifts could the company have? So this is just a question of finding out which among these choices divides 80, right? So automatically the answer is letter D because 10 divides 8. Next, there are fewer than six dozens of eggs in a large basket. If you count them two, three, four, or five at a time, there are none left over. How many eggs are in the basket? Let's look at the first sentence. There are fewer than six dozens. How many is six dozens? That's six times 12, right? So that's 72. So you cannot have D because there should be less than 72 Three, four, or five at a time, there are none left over. So meaning to say the number of eggs should be divisible by the number of eggs must be divisible by all of this, two, three, four, or five. What you can do if you want, you can just look at the choices. Can you have 20 eggs? No, because it's not divisible by three. Can you have 40 eggs? Is it divisible by 2? Yes. Again, not divisible by 40. So automatically, the answer is letter C, 60. Although, okay, that's one method. What you can also do, but I think that is the best and that is the shortest. Let us recall when you're looking for a number wherein it is divisible by all of the numbers, it's just a matter of looking for the LCM. Okay? And what is the LCM of all these numbers? If you do the continuous division, what will we do first? We have to get the number which divides all of them, right? But there is none. So, if there is none, that means the GCF is 1. Okay? And then, what you can just do, find the common just look for a number that divides at least three. We don't have at least three of the numbers. In this case, there's a number that divides both two and four, and that is two, okay? And then divide one. What will happen if the number is no longer divisible? You just bring it down, three, two, five, and that's it, right? So the LCM is this one, and that product is equal still to 60. But for me, I guess the best way pa rin is to just look at the choices, okay? What is 98 in Roman numeral form? Where is that? That is letter... What is 98? We should have 90 plus 8. But what is 90? That is X, you right? So the answer is letter... D. Okay. Mary wears a jacket every four days and her hat every five days. If she wears her hats and jackets on March 8th, what is the next day she will wear both her jacket and her hat? This is similar to the clock problem that we had, wherein the first clock rings every 30th uh, after 30 minutes, and then the other one after 60 minutes, and then the other one after 90 minutes. So this is an LCM problem. You just have to look for the LCM of 4 and 5 and that is equal to 20. So that means after 20 days, she will wear her jacket and hat. So March 8 plus 20 days is 28th, right? So the answer is letter D. She will wear them on March 28th. Okay, next, simplify and express the answer in scientific notation. So what we just need to do here is to express it first in Roman, in ordinary form, right? What is 9.4 times 10 squared? This, the exponent is positive, so that means the number is greater than 1. So we move to the right two times. So that is 940 plus. What is 3.8 times 10 to the negative 1? This is negative exponent, so that means it is less than 1. So we go to the left, 
right? Left how many times? 1, because the exponent there is 1. So therefore, that's 0 0.38. So that's 940.38. What is that in scientific notation? We will put the decimal here. So that means we will move 2 times, correct? So we have 9.4038 times 10 squared. So the answer is letter A. Next number, we want to write 404 in Roman numeral format. Again, in turning something into Roman numerals, you look at this one. 4 in the, the taste value, right? 400 plus the tenth digit is zero, and then one digit is four. So how do you write 400? 400 is C, D, and then plus four. So that's letter C. At the company picnic, 36 employees will participate in a relay race. Each team must be the same size. How many teams could the company form for the relay race? Again, this is a matter of checking which of these numbers divide. 36 and that answer is letter C. Next, convert this Roman numeral in ordinary Roman numeral form. What is L? 50, this is 20, and this is 7. So the answer is 77, letter D. Next, Mr. Gilbert bought three tables and nine chairs. He paid a total of 4050 A chair cost 150 less than a table. Find the cost of two chairs. Okay, so in this case, we need to represent this by a model. Okay, take a look at this one. We want to find the relationship first between the chair and the table, and that is given in the third sentence. A chair cost 150 less than a table. So what you need to do is you represent the table, right? This is the table, okay? But then, this is table. But then, for a chair, it cost 150 less, okay? So this is, understand, right? Because... The chair cost 150 less than the table. But Mr. Gilbert bought three tables. So I will draw three tables. So this is my three tables. 150, right? And then my chairs. I have nine of this. Let's say one, two. I have eight. And then let's just suppose I have nine of this. Okay. But the total cost here is 4,050. Okay. So what we need to do is we want to even out. What will I do? I will remove the excess. And what is the excess? I have an excess here of 450. And then this boxes here, I have 12 of this. So that means that 12 boxes, okay, assuming that is 12 already, it costs 4,050 minus because we already removed the three 150s or 450. Therefore, that's, we have here 0,0, 0 36 at 3,600. So therefore, so that is saying that 12 boxes is 3,600. So what is one box? Divided by 12. If you want, what is that? That is 300, correct? But the question is, find the cost of two chairs. One chair from our model costs 300, so therefore, two chairs cost 600. If you find this difficult, then you might say that, I don't know how to do that during the exam. What you can do also is to use 
trial and error. Let me show you how it is done. So what we will do is plug in and then we will try to see if it fits in the problem. Let's try 300. If the cost, remember that this is the cost of two chairs. So choice A would mean that one chair costs 150, correct? This is for choice A. But the chair costs 150 less than a table. So therefore, how much is one table? That would be 300 or 150 plus 150, correct? Okay, and then we will now check if that is the case, how much is three tables and nine chairs? So three tables would be 300 times three. So that's 900. Nine chairs is 150 times nine. What is 150 times nine? 45, 1, 350. But when you add 1, 350 and 900, definitely it's less than, it's way less than 4,050, correct? So that means you have to get, an, we want to go up, right? So I will now, I will just skip B, I will try letter C. So if it is letter C, that would mean that one chair is 300 and one table is again where did we get that a chair cost 150 less than the table so if this is less than the table by 150 the cost of the table is 300 plus 150 or 450 what is the cost now of three tables that's 450 times three so that's 1350 and then the cost of nine chairs that is 300 times nine or 2700 let us now add 1350 and 27 1350 plus 27050 that's exactly it 4050 so that's why the answer is letter c next the smallest five-digit number without repeated digits is subtracted from the greatest five-digit number without repeated digits. Find the difference. So this is just a matter of finding the smallest five-digit number and the greatest five-digit number. Okay, what is the greatest five-digit number? So that means we have to start with the biggest for the first digit. So that's 98765, correct? Because it says that no repeated digits. And then what is the smallest? What is the smallest five-digit number? So that means the first digit should be the smallest. One, two, three, four, five. And then we want to get the difference. So let's subtract. So the answer is 86,420.